Welcome to another moment around God's Word and Prayer today. We have been looking this week at a name for God that's used 6,500 times in the Old Testament. It's the name Jehovah or Yahweh, sometimes translated in our English translation simply as Lord in the Old Testament. And today we'd like to look at Jehovah Sidkenu, which means the Lord is my righteousness. Now, we find this name and the, the, the origin of it in, in the prophet Jeremiah in the Old Testament. He's prophesying about the coming of the Messiah. The Messiah was a culmination of the best and highest hopes of the Jewish people. He'd bring deliverance from foreign domination. He'd restore order and, and righteousness to a world that was full of corruption and injustice. And so in verse 5 of Jeremiah 23, Jeremiah writes, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This idea of the branch is very much messianic language. And of course, they knew the Messiah would be the son of David. So I will raise up for David a righteous branch and he will reign as king and act wisely. Why, Why would he reign as king in a wise way? Because he's not just the branch, but he, he's the righteous branch. And as a result, he will do justice and righteousness in the land. And we have people marching in the streets for the cause of justice right now. Social justice, racial justice. Our hearts long for justice in the world. But here will come the Messiah who will do justice and righteousness in the land because he is at his core, at the core of identity, his identity. He's not a corrupt God. He's not an evil God. He is a righteous God. He is a righteous God. And so he goes on in the next verse, verse 6, Jeremiah does. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. And this is his name by which he will be called. Jehovah Sidke knew, the Lord is our righteousness. That is his name. The Lord is our righteousness. Well, this takes on new meaning when the Messiah does come in Jesus and he dies on the cross to take away our sin. And, you know, we don't just follow Christ. I, you know, I hear people say all that time, well, I'm a follower of Christ. Well, and I identify myself that way sometimes too, but we're, we're more than just followers of Christ. We're in Christ. If you put your faith in him, just like Jesus died, the old life of sin and corruption and unrighteousness dies. Just as Jesus rose from the dead, his resurrection life comes into us to bring righteousness into our lives, to bring rightness into our lives, to make us holy. And, and because of his, Jesus shed blood, if we're in Christ, we, we then have Jesus' righteousness. And that's why Paul in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30 says, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. Because of God that you're in Christ Jesus. Not just follow him, but you're in him. And he has become to us wisdom from God. Remember Jeremiah said he will act wisely, this, this Messiah, this righteous Messiah. He's become for us the wisdom of God. Then he breaks that down into three parts. Righteousness, holiness, and redemption. You notice that Jesus now becomes our righteousness. Paul talked about that in Philippians 3, verse 8. What is more, I consider everything loss. He's talking about all his religious life before that, apart from Christ. Everything he did to please God, everything he did to keep law. He said, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. Listen, this is Jehovah Tzidkenu, embodied in Jesus. He is our righteousness. The Lord, our righteousness, is his name. There's a, there's a theological word we use, imputed, when we talk about righteousness. If we're in Christ, we have what, what's known as imputed righteousness. What does that mean? To impute something to somebody means to act externally to them and and, and declare them a certain way. And so imputed righteousness means that when God sees us, if we have the righteousness of Christ, God sees us as if we had never sinned. Because Jesus never sinned and he died to forgive our sins. 
in Christ. This is God our righteousness embodied in Jesus and if we're in Christ we can have the righteousness of Christ. So that God the Father looks at us and he doesn't see disqualifying things. He sees the righteousness of his own son and then he acts towards us as if we'd never sinned. That's what opens up our faith life. That's what opens up our prayer life. That's what opens up and changes all of life. So we've been saying all week our, our theme verse Psalm 9 verse 10 those who know your name We'll trust you. Those who know that you're the Lord, our righteousness, we're going to trust you because you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Why? Because we have his righteousness. Our Father, we thank you. I pray where we're self-conscious in prayer, where we're self-doubting, where we're still maybe even falsely guilty, or feeling guilty over things that we've already repented of and trusted you to forgive us. I pray you'll give us victory today. I pray in the triumph of your name, the Lord, our righteousness, you will help us to be secure in you, that we have your righteousness. Thank you for this. And therefore, we're not disqualified in your sight. Therefore, we can pray with freedom and confidence. Thank you for this. And we bless you today for becoming our righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.